Hi, this is Julie Lerman, author of Programming Entity Framework, with the fifth in a series of beginning Entity Framework tutorials I've created for Visual Studio 2010. You can find more of these videos at www.pluralsight.com. In this video, you'll get your first look at querying against the model using Link to Entities. So let's get started. I'll be using a model that I created in the first video of this series, and this is based on a modified version of the AdventureWorks database. I already have a solution set up. My model is in its own project, and I have another project, Simple Queries, which is simply a console application project. In a previous video, I showed you how to set up your model project and any consuming projects, so you should look for that if you want to see how I did that. So I'll go over to the program, and I already have a little bit of this set up. I have a customer queries method, and we can start using that. So in order to begin querying, we need something that will be responsible for the queries and to fire them off. And that is something called an object context in Entity Framework. But we don't directly work with the object context. What we work with is the class that was generated from the entity container that contains all of these entities in the model. And that entity container class inherits from the object context. The context gives us the ability to do queries, um, and it will execute those queries on the database for us and bring back objects and populate them for us. So let's go ahead and start by instantiating that. And my convention is to always name my context context. So I'll drill into the namespace, and then there's the entity container right there. And because that entity container inherits from object context, I can query from it. So I'm going to do a link to entities query from C in context. And now the context will give me access to all the entity sets within there. And I'll query some customers and then just select C. So this is the simplest of simple link queries. Now, all I've done so far is define the query itself. This won't cause the query to be executed. The query will get executed the first time I actually want to have some of that data in hand. So the act of wanting to work with one of those, one or more of those objects will execute the query. So let me write one more line of code here, which will be customers equals, and then the way I'm going to execute this is I'm going to call toList. So what that will do is execute the query and then return the results into a list of customer types. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that I have 447 customer objects. And if I open one of them up, you can see that all of its fields, all of its properties are populated already. So let's look at a different way of querying. This one I simply asked for all of the customers. I can also do filtering in queries. Almost anything that you can do in a link query, link to objects query, you can do in a link to entities query. Not every operator or function is supported. Most of them are, and then also um, Entity Framework has added a few specific features so that link to entities knows how to work specifically with Entity Framework and Entity Framework models. So I'll just do a, a simple filter here where c.customerID equals 5. Select C. And rather than getting a whole list just to contain one object, I'll ask for first or default. That will just give me back an object so I don't have to drill into a list to get at that. So now customers is simply a customer object that's already been populated for us. Let's look at a couple of different ways of querying. Now, I've used the Julia Childs method of setting up the rest of this code. Um, pulled it right out of the oven there. The next method I'll be working with is customers with orders. So instead of just bringing back the customers, I can bring the customers and orders back in a single query. And I can do that using a special method for Entity Framework called include. And what I'll be doing is referred to as eager loading. So let me rewrite my query. 
and I'll still use link operators from C in context customers. Now here's where I'm going to put my include. And unfortunately, include takes a string, so I have to be very careful. Sales order headers that I get it right. You can create an extension method so that you can put lambdas in there and, and get strong typing again. And then I'll still just query for that single customer. And then we'll return this into a customer again by calling first or default. And then we'll go ahead and run this. And the interesting thing is we'll take a look at SQL Profiler. And you can see down here that the query performed an outer join and brought back the sales order headers specifically for that one customer that I requested. Now, if I had requested multiple customers, it would have done the same type of outer join, bringing back each customer's sales order headers. So there's something else that happens in Entity Framework, and this is in Visual Studio 2010. This was not a feature prior to .NET 4, which is lazy loading. Lazy loading is on by default, and I can actually demonstrate that just with a debugger. Now what I'll do is I'm going to take that eager loading out again, and I'm going to go ahead and run this query one more time. Now I'm going to flip back over to the SQL Profiler, and you can see that we didn't do the eager loading. There's nothing going on there with sales orders. Okay, So I'm still in debug mode. Now watch what happens when I drill into the customer. And this will happen in your code also, but debug, the debugger does it as well. If I look at the sales order headers and expand that, even though I didn't query for the sales orders, there they are, the three sales orders. And if I go back over here, we can see a new query was executed. And this is how lazy loading works. Even if you didn't request the, uh, the related entities in the original query, lazy loading will bring them to you. We'll go out and execute a call against the database if you actually happen to ask for them in your code. So if I, in my code, it said customer dot sales orders something or other, count or get them or go bind them or do something with those sales orders, Entity Framework would have realized that they hadn't been loaded yet and it would go out and do that. So the only thing you need to be concerned about with lazy loading is paying attention to when you're going to be hitting the database and you don't mean to or hitting the database multiple times. So you need to consider and weigh the balance between doing eager loading or letting lazy loading do your loading for you after the fact. Let's take a look at another type of a query. Now what I'll do is... So rather than write a link query, I'm just going to go directly to those customers and call to list on them. And this uses the object services of Entity Framework without layering link to entities on top of them. I can get those customers. And there they all are, all 447 customers. Now let me add on a link method. I'm going to do some filtering. I'll do where. And when you're using link methods instead of link operators, you need to use lambdas to define your predicate. So I'm going to say where C, C dot. And now what I'm going to do here is rather than eager loading the orders, I'm going to filter and ask for all customers that have orders. I'm not going to necessarily bring the orders back, but I just want to look at the customers that have orders in the system. I'm going to drill into the sales order headers navigation property and then do a set operation, any, and, and this will ask Entity Framework to query only for customers who have any sales orders. So I don't have to worry about writing all those joins in a complex SQL statement. So there they are, only 32 came back. Now I didn't request the sales orders, but again, lazy loading will bring them in if I start drilling into the debugger or, or looking at those in my code.
The last thing I want to do is a projection query. And this is where, rather than bringing back entire objects, I'm going to ask for specific information. And I'm just going to do that by adding on to one of the existing queries. Now, the syntax for this in Visual Basic and in C Sharp are a little bit different. So um, this will be the C Sharp way of doing it. So from customers, what I want to do is bring back uh, the customer, um, I'll want the customer ID and the customer first name and the customer last name. And I could even ask for all the sales orders. So now what I'm going to get is an anonymous type and three of its properties will be these, the integer and these two strings, and then the fourth property of that type will be a collection of sales order types. So if we look at customer in the debugger, we can see now that it has these four properties, customer ID, first name, last name, and sales order headers. They are all brought back within the same query so that's a look at getting started with querying against your entity data model with link to entities. And the important things to remember are that you need to begin with a context. That's how you're going to be able to build and execute your queries. And also pay attention to what's going on with that lazy loading. Um, it may be a great benefit in some scenarios and in other scenarios you may get a knock on the door from your IT pro who said, you're making an awful lot of hits to the database. What's going on there? Again, I'm Julie Lerman. Thanks for watching this video on getting started with linked to entities. Here are links to some helpful resources.